Hi, I'm Mike Bellevue, and I'm out here at the West Shore Sportsman's Association on a ridiculously cold late December morning. And today I'm going to be sighting in my Smith carbine. Now, this is an actual original Smith carbine um, from the Civil War, and it probably did serve in combat because very few of these went unissued. They only made about 30,000 of them. It was the fourth most popular carbine in the Union Cavalry. And, um, of course, these things were mostly sighted for 200 yards, right, battle sites, which I'm not going to shoot it at. So, in order to, to get it to a 50-yard plinking gun, I had to have a new front sight put on it. So, as with so many of, of my uh, cap and ball type guns, this gun went out to David Stavlo at Lodgewood Manufacturing, uh, right after I bought it, for him to work his magic and get into shootable condition. It really didn't need much. But, you know, usually on these old guns, the nipples are frozen. They're usually eroded, no good. So he put a new nipple on it. The uh, flash channel from the nipple to the chamber was full of rust and crud, and he, he got all that snaked out. He lightened the trigger up because this gun has a mainspring that is like the suspension springs on a 32 Ford. I mean, I've, I've shot a lot of military guns. I have not run into one with such a heavy spring, so the trigger pull was awful on this thing. Uh, David kept that spring in, so we should get very positive ignition, but he got me a trigger pull around five or six pounds, and I can live with that. Uh, better than the 20 pounds it was to start with. And, of course, he put a higher front sight on it. And that's why we're here today, because that's going to have to be filed down to the correct height for 50-yard shooting. But before we got to this point, after I got it back from David, I had to do some work on my end. So we're going to get in the Wayback Machine, and I'm going to take us back a week in time and show you what I did with this thing in the shop to get it to the point where we can be out here shooting it today. And after I do that, we're going to start sighting it in. So... Uh, Get ready, because we're going to be putting an old soldier back in action. This is a completed Smith carbine cartridge. Kind of interesting. Uh, the cartridge case was made out of India rubber. And these days we use this plastic. And you can see it's got a hole in the back. I don't know if I can get it so you can see through it. There you go. So, basically... The cap goes off, so it's a jet of flame through that, it makes the powder, and blows a bullet out of here. But powder can leak out of that hole. So what a lot of people do is they will go inside and put a little little circle of tissue paper in there. Now, I'm finding it hard to get them inside, so I just put a little bit of glue right around the back. <laughs> I take a half inch punch tissue paper. This is the same stuff that you would use to pad your Christmas gifts. I'll make sure I only have one. And I'm just gonna put it on there. Oops, slide it around a little bit. There we go. And the primer should burn right through that. Now, if for some reason it doesn't, I'm just gonna poke a hole in that and set it off. So. Uh, not really a problem. So I'm just going to let a bunch of these dry, and then I'll put powder and bullets in them. Uh, and these are really about the easiest cartridges to make for Civil War breech loaders. So compared to, say, the, the Sharps rifle or carbine, putting together the, um, the cartridges for the Smith breech loader is really pretty simple. I got these bullets cast uh, from Smith's carbine mold from Era's Gone bullet molds. I'm just rubbing them with my black powder lube, which is two-thirds lamb's tallow, one-third beeswax. I'm just filling in that that groove there. Probably not the fastest way to do it, but it really is the simplest.
All right, so I got like 30 of these things ready, right? 10, 20, 30 of them put together right now. I'm just going to put powder in these. So, you know, I took the cases and I, I glued the tissue paper over them. This is a plastic case. The originals would have been made out of hard rubber. I've got a powder measure set to 35 grains. I'm using Swiss 2F. I uh, changed the can so I could use my pour spout on here, the old cell metal Goex cans. So we just get a load of powder. I'm just gonna dump that right in here. Easy peasy. <laughs> I'm gonna take a bullet. Just gonna wipe a little of the lube off the bottom. Don't have to, but I like to do that. And now uh, we're just gonna just push it into the case. There you go, done. Cartridge made. That's how easy it is. So I gotta get a bunch of these ready so I can go sight this rifle in. Well, as some of you know, those of you who follow me on Facebook particularly, know that a few months ago I was looking for a Pieta replica of a Smith carbine and just could not find one for love or money anywhere in the country. In, in fact, I basically I lost out on the last one at Taylor's and Company. But when one door closes, another one opens. I, I found a original Smith carbine at Dixie Gunworks and purchased that and got it for a very good price. So the next thing was to make it shootable. So I, I sent it to David Stavlo at Lodgewood Manufacturing. This thing has an amazingly strong spring and he replaced the nipple the nipples are always frozen and all crapped up uh, cleared out the rusted rusted up firing channel made a new clean out screw for it and put a higher front sight on which means i have to sight it in uh, here here's the original nipple by the way not in that bad shape but uh, could have been drilled out and cleaned up, but bound to be eroded, so I prefer to have a new nipple on them, but I've got the old one in case I need to sell this as a collector's piece. So, I like RWS musket caps, but for the last few years, you just can't find them for love or money. So like everybody else, I've been using these, which are imported by Schutzen, black powder uh, and I got a lot of these I had to buy 5,000 of them so I probably have about 4,000 left the problem with these is even though they look like they're made out of brass or copper they are not they're actually made out of steel with a brass plating on them and and the problem with that is a typical copper cap is a little bit undersized, but when you put it on, it expands because it's soft. And the hammer can drive it down and it goes off. Now, the problem with these Schutzen caps is they're extremely tight, and because they're made out of steel, they really don't expand. So you can get a lot of misfires off of them uh, because it, sometimes it takes a couple of hammer blows to drive the cap down uh, so that the, you know, the fulminate is on top of the cap. That's not a good thing. So there's two ways to go on this. The way I've been going on most of my guns is to turn down the nipple uh, until the caps fit easily on them. And I really don't like doing that uh, because then if you get another brand of caps, they're way too loose for it, right? So today I'm going to try the other way of doing it, and we'll see how that goes. I'm just going to show you what that is. It's a little more labor-intensive than turning down the cap. Okay. Well, I've been playing around with this, and what I've discovered is that instead of slitting all four sides, I can just make one cut. 
in half. And they go off every time, and it's way less time to do it. So, like I say, I'm gonna do a couple hundred of these up, put them in the kit, and we'll be good to go. Well, these Civil War guns, of course, are, are battle sighted for 200 yards, which, you know, I have no intentions of shooting it that far. So, in order to shoot at 50 yards, I had Dave Stavlo put in a tall front sight. And this front sight's going to have to be filed down at the range to uh, get it sighted in with the load I'm going to use. Now, unfortunately, that big rectangular blade's not that easy to file uh, cleanly at the range. So, I'm just going to clip a corner off of that and make a sight configuration that's easier for me to work with when I'm sighting in. Okay, so that shape is going to be much easier to file down to the correct height when I'm sighting it in. So, anyway, we're just about ready to go to the range now. Okay, I'm all set up. Target's 50 yards away. And I'm sighting it at 50 yards because even though the battle sights were set for 200 yards, I think that's wildly optimistic with these Civil War carbines because it fires this cartridge. All right, I kind of showed you putting this baby together. Well, that is really the equivalent of kind of a heavy bullet 45 Colt uh, revolver cartridge. So we're not talking about high-powered rifle cartridges here. Certainly not 4570 class. So I think 50 yards would be good for this as a playing around range because I'm not going to be uh, riding in the cavalry with it. So. This is my procedure. I'm going to fire three shots to get a baseline. And that will guide my actions uh, in adjusting the sight. So I'm going to fire three shots, get a baseline. Then I'm going to file ten strokes of the file. And I'm going to, file, I'm going to fire three more shots and see how much it moved. And then I'll be able to judge how much filing I have to do to get it you know, pretty much on target, and then fine-tune it in. So it's kind of a tedious process. And, uh, you know, I always say, I wish there was a magic button on these old guns, and you pressed it, and the sights would grow micrometer knobs. You could dial it in, get it sighted in easily, push the button, and it morphed back into a traditional sight. But no such luck. So we're just going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. So, as you can see, those uh, first three shots hit very, very low, barely on the paper, which is not unexpected. So, the trick now is to file down that front sight to raise the point of impact until we're in the bullseye. And uh, I've got a, a methodology that I, I use for doing that on all of these guns, so I'm just going to show you how that goes. You know, I've got to sight in quite a few historical rifles that don't have readily adjustable sights on them. So, over the years I've developed a, a methodology for doing this. And I've developed a kit of tools uh, to make life easier. So, the heart of the system is this vise. And this is just a junky flea market vise that I've bolted to some boards and I can, I can uh, clamp this down to any bench or table to work on it. And then I got a bag of tools with files and hones and hammers and punches and all, all that good stuff. Uh, most of which we won't need today. But this lets me work on this thing without having to hold it in one hand and file in another and having everything wobble all around. So, like I said, the, the way I do this is I'm going to start off by taking 10 strokes of the file. And then I'll shoot it again and I'll see how much that moves it. And that'll tell me if I need to take 30 strokes of the file or if I need to take five strokes of the file uh, and as we get closer to being zeroed in of course we're going to take fewer strokes and, and try to bring it in line so I'm going to see how much 10 strokes moves my group and and that's going to be my calibration point so we're going to just do 10 strokes Okay. 
Okay. So that's 10 strokes. And let's see what we can do. Okay, that moved it over a foot, which is way more than I expected. So that lets me know that I'm probably only going to be doing five stroke intervals for the next one. Because that got me a lot more height than I expected it to. But that's why we do that. All right, so I was kind of surprised. After taking five file licks, I grouped basically in the same place, which tells me I must have been holding wrong the first time. <laughs> My side picture, I don't know. So I did another three licks of the file, and you can see the orange dots. Now those three licks brought me up into the black on the target. So after that, I just did one lick of the file and went back to shooting. Okay, right on the money. Let's go look at it. All right, so we started off barely on the paper. Right, we took 10 strokes of the file, which put us up in here. I'm not sure why it moved so far. I did another three strokes of the file, and that put me in here. I did three more strokes with the file that put me up here. After that, I did one more stroke with the file, and there we are for three shots. Now, like I say, I could adjust the windage a little bit, and you can do that on the Smith, which you can't on a lot of them. But uh, I think I'm just going to leave it there for now and play around with it for a bit. And I can always fine-tune it later. So, anyway, pretty happy. 15 rounds from there to there. Okay, now that it's basically sighted in, let's see if I can ring some steel with it at 50 yards. Got him! <laughs> well, now that I've got the Smith carbine sighted in, it's ready for prime time. At some point in the future, I'll be doing a deep dive on the history and operation and uh, just everything you'd want to know about the Smith Carbine. So stay tuned to the channel. And until next week, bye.